Hello everyone and welcome to a special preview for Saturday the 6th of July, Sandown Park, the world pool travels to Isha as we look forward to the Coral Eclipse where the generations clash and we will see City of Troy up against older horses for the first time, eight declared runners, it's fabulous to see, hopefully by post time they would have stood to their ground. These are they, we can bring you the field in 2024, we do have some older horses, our riffer, there's Hans Anderson who might just be in there as a pacemaker for his illustrious stable mate, City of Troy. You've got Sailor. City of Troy himself is there, along with other three-year-olds, Dancing Gemini, Ghostwriter, JRB, and the filly, See the Fire, under David Probert. Can't wait for this race. Um, Graham, an overview. What are we looking forward to in 2024? Hello, Nick. Hello, John. Hello, everyone. Great to see a derby winner in the Coral Eclipse. That's always something special. And, as you say, it's the first test, first major test, of whether a crack three-year-old can beat the older horses. The good news is there are at least five top quality older horses in Britain and Ireland who could give uh, City of Troy a race. The bad news is that August Rodan, White Birch, Luxembourg, Measured Time, Passenger are not here. In other words, the Derby winner, the emphatic Derby winner is on a hiding to nothing here. He's got 10 pounds and more in hand of this field. And if he's the horse, that Aidan O'Brien and the lads say he is, then he needs to win this by open length. Absolutely. Graham and John Blance as well to, to look forward to this race. Now, John, I always get the feeling every year we always talk about it. It's like it's a line in the sand moment that the coral eclipse is such an important part of midsummer. You've had all that's been with the older horses, with the three year olds, and it's kind of that moment where you think, right, this is a narrative point. Yeah, well, that will be the narrative for the rest of the season. How will the classic generation get on against their elders? This is the first chance at this sort of trip uh, for that to be done. Last year, of course, Paddington, having uh, proved himself as a terrific miler, uh, moved up to 10 furlongs. Uh, this particular case this year is City of Troy moving down from the mile and a half in the derby. And every year, there's always that uh, example of, of a three-year-old trying to prove themselves against the elders. Isn't there just? Right. Aiden O'Brien, you mentioned him. He's won this race seven times a record. He bids to make it. An eighth, he's won at Graham with some absolute greats. And this year, he bids to win at the City of Troy. Let's sort of remind ourselves of where we are with this horse. From the back end of the two-year-old year through till what happened last time and um, that great moment in the derby. Yeah, this is the, the race that you host at Newmarket that earned him the champion two-year-old crown of Europe in 2023. As you can see, what he does well is hard running from a long way out. He takes command. And he piles it on late. This form is not bad. Al Yanavi is a good quality horse. Hartem was well beaten. And then we pick up Epsom. There was one major blip in between when he ran very badly in the 2000 guineas. Still hard to explain. John, this was emphatic. And what I liked about this performance, most of all, when Ryan put his whip down, Ryan Moore late on, this horse kept running and he kept piling it on again. He certainly did, and he produced two very good sectionals as well uh, when he required them, when some of the horses who'd set a, a pretty severe gallop were getting tired. Ambiente Friendly and Los Angeles have both run very well at the Curra subsequently, as Whirlpool viewers know. And I think this horse, City of Troy, uh, has earned the right to be a very short price favourite for this race and shouldn't have a problem with a step down in trip and will probably get a decent gallop to aim at with Hans Anderson in the race. Graham, when it comes to the derby... Um, which is, what are we talking, beginning of June, we're now at the beginning, beginning of July. I guess it would, would seem quite logical in a lot of ways for horses to go to the Coral Eclipse. Is that always the case? It doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen very often, certainly not with Aidan's Derby winners over the years. And Derby winners can win the Eclipse. Derby winners can be beaten. This is the record over the last oh, 25, 27 years or so. Benny the Dip wasn't fancied to win a good quality Eclipse. He was 6-1. to one. He finished second. Motivator was two to five. He was beaten. He was um, beaten in a tactical race and finished second. Authorised was four to seven. He was turned over. Uh, but see the stars and Golden Horn, the last two Derby winners to try and follow up in the Coral Eclipse, both won. So it's there in the record books. Two have won at short prices. Two have been beaten at short prices. And Benny did it run well with no excuses. See the sound of it. Only two of the last 15 years. Anyway, we shall see. Now... John, when it comes to the threats, and there will be threats to City of Troy, it's not a one-horse affair. This is it fair to say that in Aidan O'Brien, his biggest threat as the trainer might come from his own son? Well, that is interesting. I mean, Al Riff is a horse who is relatively lightly raced for a horse of his age now four. We're watching the national stakes, which he won as a two-year-old. He's the only other Group 1 winner in the race, this Al Riffer. Uh, his recent efforts, both in France and in America, 
have been interesting in the sense that they've not been races that have been run to suit his hold up and then staying on style in the latter stages. I think he's going to get a good pace to aim at here. And yes, uh, uh, Joseph O'Brien might be the biggest threat to his old man, Graham. Yeah, you ran a very, very solid race first time this season in a five-way go for a Group 1 in France. I think he was caught out, as you're saying, in a tactical race at Saratoga last time. It's a bit of a vote of confidence in, in Joseph's opinion of this horse. You always get the vibe that he's, he's thought Al Riffer is genuine Group 1 material. He has a Group 1 win on his dance card, courtesy of that national stakes. That form has whiskers on uh, these days. But I still think that Al Riffer is a, a definite place player this weekend. Uh, let's have a look back at uh, some more recent form for all that it was at the start of the season. It was a whirlpool day. It was the 2000 Guineas. It was the big day for City of Troy. There you go. He finished ninth. He absolutely blew out. And then we doused him in the derby. Some of us did. Uh, much to our own dismay come a little bit later on. But Graham, ghost rider in front of him, ran a very good race. Yeah, that clip of um, City of Troy checking out tells you that good things can be beaten. Uh, this was a good performance from Ghost Rider. He had no excuses. He didn't re really need any. There's depth to this form. Yes, mm. notable speech didn't shine at Royal Ascot. But Rosalian has certainly polished the form. Um, horses like any sharing in the yellow colours, white cap. He looks a group one sprinter now. And staying on well for fourth, Ghost Writer showed he's trained on. And he went to the French Derby last time. John, far from discredited. Far from discredited. No, it was a pretty good effort. I, I did think he was somewhat um, held by the way the race was run. He had a nice low draw, which is a big help at Sean T. He was from gate two. He settled in behind the pace. He was a little bit outpaced when the taps were turned on there. Stayed on okay. Um, I haven't got him in the numbers, but he has got gate one, so I'm wary of him. I think the three-year-olds uh, here in this particular spot, apart from City of Troy, aren't particularly strong. or not as strong as you would like them to be uh, to really give the race the depth that you'd want. Um, Graham, Aidan O'Brien's won seven Coral Eclipses. There is another Coral Eclipse winning trainer in the lineup this year. Brian Meehan, 18 years ago. David Jr., remember him. Well, he's got JRB to try and make it two this year. I do. I remember David Jr. I was at Sandown that year. Uh, it wasn't a vintage eclipse when David Jr. won, and it would probably have to be a, an eclipse where the favourite disappoints for JRB to win, but he's trained on very well. This was his first performance of the season, I think in the field and stakes at Newmarket, and he puts it to bed in tidy style. Maybe Chester didn't suit him a uh, second time. He was um, just an OK third behind Hong Kong-bound uh, Capulet. But as you can see here, he storms clear. And John, what did you make of his Ascot win? It was a solid performance to win the Hampton Court stakes, but it was a group three, and the runner-up King's Gambit was a bit unlucky. He was a little bit, uh, but I like the way JRB ran. It was a properly run race there. Yes, he was quite wide on the track, which can be the place to be in those sorts of races at Ascot. But from a tight perspective, it was a good effort. And I think he can make the step up here. And he has got a rating of 111, which I think can be built on. Uh, all 10 runnings of this have had a, a winner, 110 or more. He's going to need to be better than 111. But I think he's got the requisite improvement in him. Don't think he'll win, but I've sneaked him in the numbers. Go on then, Graham, just before we do the, the one, two, three, four, and just to embellish this, because I think a lot of people worldwide are going to enjoy the color clips and will have done over the years. Um, just indulge us with your favorite ever running of this particular race. I'm going back in time, but it's worth recalling Falbrath, the mighty Falbrath, just over 20 years ago now. I think it may have been 2003. He won, I think, a 15 runner eclipse, beating another very good middle distance called Nayaf, a deep race in quality and quantity. But it's body of work that defines superstar racehorses. Falbrath ran in 10 races that year. That's very rare for a high-class horse nowadays. Every one of them was a group one. And he started in France in the spring. He went all through Europe in the summer. Royal Ascot, Sandown, York, Leopardstown. And he signed off by winning the Hong Kong Vars at Chartin in December. Now that is a racehorse, brother. <laughs> Wow. Um, John, what about you? Uh, Giants Causeway turned the Millennium terrific battle with Kalanisi. It wasn't his only terrific battle with Kalanisi. And uh, yeah, if you were to um, kind of invent or create a race, a race horse to try and explain uh, to either non-believers here or you know people from a, a different part of the universe why we love horse racing, uh, you would show Giants Causeway's body of work, I think, to them because he was something else. And he won this race, as I say, in a terrific battle back at the turn of the millennium.
Okay, I'll chuck in for my two pence worth. The greatest horse I've ever seen. And I'm not going into that debate with Franco. I'm not doing it. I've seen the stars in 2009. Six months, six group ones, different countries, different distances. He was the high watermark as regards racehorses. Right. Um, that was then. That was our little moment of nostalgia. Let's bring it back to the present. Graham Cutting will be one, two, three, four for the Eclipse. I'm not straying too far from the obvious with the winner. I think City of Troy needs to make a statement here. First time against all the horses, £10 or more in hand on all known ratings, and he should win and win handsomely. Like John, I think Al Riffa has Quinella potential. Here in Britain at the moment, he's a much bigger price than a couple of the three-year-olds. I don't think he should be. So I'm going to go four, one, five, and six. City of Troy, Al Riffa. Dancing Gemini, we haven't mentioned we should do. Don't think he quite stayed in the derby. He's got eight lengths to find with City of Troy. But I think this trip is just right for him. Four, one, five, six with City of Troy. Bang on top. John. Yeah, the same trio for me, actually. So uh, there we go. Should Whirlpool viewers be worried? I don't know. We'll find out come Saturday afternoon. City of Troy on top. Can't really embellish anything that Graham said there. I'll refer, yeah, with Hans Anderson in the field and also see the fire. They could just work up quite a nice bit of pace out in front, and that will definitely suit Al Riffa. And Graham's absolutely right. He's far too big in the markets here in the moment. Uh, and I think uh, he's uh, uh, pretty much nailed on to run a good race. Dancing Gemini in for third, the, the stride length boys. Kevin Blake wrote a very good piece about how Dancing Gemini doesn't or didn't really stride like a mile and a half horse for the derby, despite his breed, uh, breeding. He was proved right. I was proved wrong, not for the first time. So 10 furlongs could be dancing Gemini's trip. And I'm going to give JRB the chance to improve into a really high quality pattern level company. Not too sure if he is yet, but he might be and he might sneak forth. Super stuff. It's uh, keep it simple. City of Troy. We have a team steam for the Coral Eclipse. Graham and John, thank you very much indeed. We went down memory lane as well. Best of luck wherever you're watching the Coral Eclipse. Come Saturday, it should be a belter. The generations clash and we can't wait.